Over the last few months, games written in Click Team Fusion have been enjoying some great successes through Steam's Greenlight program. I'm very pleased to count myself among them with the recent approval of Crystal Terrace 2 when somebody at Valve must have leaned on the accept button by mistake. As the process can be fairly involved once you've been accepted, I'm putting together a series of videos to describe the steps new developers have to take to prepare their games for Steam. The documentation that Valve provides for new partners is generally excellent, and you can find it under the Documentation and Help section from any page in the partner site. However, the number of options on the site can be overwhelming, and some of the new terminology can be confusing at first. As you don't plug the Steamworks API directly into Fusion, there are also a couple of things that Click Team developers need to do differently from the steps that the documentation outlines. So in this first video, we'll be looking at setting up your game to download and work under Steam. Setting all of this up for the first time is probably the most involved step of the whole process. Most of this is done on the website, and you'll actually need to do very little in Fusion at this stage. When you're greenlit, you'll get an email of congratulation and a link to your greenlight page telling you what to do next. Once you've acknowledged your game's greenlit status and entered some basic information, you'll receive an email from Steam inviting you to sign into the Steamworks developer site at partner.steamgames.com. This will be your hub for setting up the game's store information and downloads, as well as the features that Steam provides like achievements. So let's go in and set ourselves up. Once you've logged into the Steam Partner site, the first thing to check is under the Users and Permissions tab on the top bar. Go to the Overview menu item and take a look at the list at the bottom of the page. You should see a package named as a developer copy of your game, along with an identifying number. If a package for the application you're trying to set up doesn't appear in here, this is a mistake that sometimes happens when games are activated from Greenlight, and you should contact Valve support on the development forums to have them fix it. I'll put the link in the video description. If your application is missing from here, then you can still do a lot of the setup that I'll explain in this video, but you won't be able to upload any downloadable material for it until this gets fixed. Whether you have a package or not, next pull down the Users and Permissions tab again, and go to the Manage Groups page. Click into the Everyone group to look at all the users. If you have multiple games on Steam, you can set up different groups if you want different people to be able to access them, but we can use this group for all permissions just now. This is where you grant permission for people to modify the applications on your account. You should already have yourself in here, and I've also set up a couple of test accounts that I'll explain later. If you have a warning that there are no applications in the group, click the Add Application button and select your title from the drop-down list. Now look at the entry in the member list with your account name to see the permissions you have, and check that you have all 11 of them. If you need to modify them, click the paper and pencil icon that appears at the right-hand side of the table, and then check the necessary boxes. What this will do is make sure that your account has the permission to edit everything that we need to, including upload new builds, which are collections of the game's data files. The Steam documentation recommends that you set up a separate build account on Steam and use it to do this, but it isn't really necessary if you're going to be the only one making new builds of the software. If you do want to set up a shared build account, go up to the menu bar again and pull the menu down to get to Manage Users, then click the Add User button above the table. You'll need to know their Steam login name and their email address to add them. If you're doing a build account, you'll need to set up that account on Steam first. For a build account, you want to check the Edit App Metadata and Publish App Changes to Steam boxes, and you can also allow people to test the game from here by adding them and giving them no additional permissions at all. That's all we need to do for users and permissions. Next, we'll be preparing some information about the game. Now that we've set up our user, we need to start setting up the game's information as we want it to appear in Steam. Let's go to the All Applications page under Apps and Packages, and select the name of the game we're setting up. On this landing page, you'll have a whole host of options. The one we're interested in just now is the Edit Steamworks settings one under Technical Tools. This is the hub for a lot of information about the game we want to upload. First of all, go through and make sure the basics are filled out. Your game should have a name and indicate which OS it runs on. For Fusion games at the time of recording this video, this will likely be Windows only. You can also upload some images for the application store page, but you'll probably want to come back and do this later. For now, we need to associate a depot with the application. Depot is the term that Steam uses for a group of downloadable files, so we're going to create a new one which we'll later put our game files into, and tell Steam that we want this collection of files to be installed to the user's hard drive when the user downloads the game. Go up to hover over the Installation tab on the menu, and select Depots. I already have a depot set up here, but if this is your first time on this page, you'll have a notice about no depots being available for the application. So hit the green button to add a new depot, give it a name, just the title of the game will do if you're only planning on having one collection of files to download, and select an ID for it. You can have up to nine of them by default on any one game. 
After that, you want to specify which types of installation this depot is appropriate for. You can set up different depots if your game has different data files for multiple languages or operating systems. In this case, the categories don't really matter because I only have one version of the game and there's nothing that should be different about anyone's installation, but you can make them specific if you want. Fusion applications work on both 32 and 64 bit architectures, so leave that part alone. Once you've done that, hit Save Changes and we'll move on to the next stage. Go back to the Installation drop down and go to Configuration this time. Here we're going to define how Steam installs and launches the game. Set the name of the install folder to something appropriate for the game and hit Update Install Folder, then go down to the Launch Options section. Here you want to hit Add New Launch Option if there isn't one there already, or Edit if you already have one, and provide the name of the exe file that Steam should run when the game is started. You don't usually need to touch anything else, but there's space for adding command line arguments or using a different working directory. You can also add more launch options if you have something like a separate executable or launcher for setting the game's options. If the extensions your game uses need any prerequisites, you can go to the Installers section under the Installation tab again and check the boxes of the software libraries that the game requires. Usually a Fusion game won't need any of these, but if you're using an extension that you know requires something like the Visual C++ redistributable, you can tell Steam to include it in the installation here. Now that we've changed the game settings, you'll have a red bar at the top of the App Data Admin page warning that you need to publish before changes take effect. Publishing in this context doesn't mean releasing the game, it just means committing the changes that we've been making. So go over to the Publish tab on the right and hit Prepare for Publishing. Steam is quite guarded about this and we'll go through a couple more layers of validation, including entering a confirmation via the keyboard that you really want to publish. This can be irritating when you're making changes at the testing stage, but it makes sure you check you know what you're doing before you alter anything once the game has been released. Now with the depot and installation information set up, it's time to start getting the game uploaded for the first time. So now it's finally time to do something with the game. For these videos, I'll be using a slightly to severely unfinished copy of my game Crystal Terrace 2 to demonstrate with, so I hope you'll forgive any rough edges. Go into Fusion, make sure everything's running as it should be, and that you have Windows XE application selected under the build type in your application properties. Then select Build and Application under the File menu, and build the XE in a clean folder that only contains the game and any external files that you need for the game to run. Here I've set up a Releases folder that only has what I'm uploading to Steam. Bear in mind that the exe name should match what you told Steam to expect when you configured it under the Installation tab. Go back over to the Steam Partner site and from the home page, take a look at the right hand bar and find the button that lets you download the Steamworks SDK. This stands for Software Development Kit and contains the tools that we'll be using to upload the game to Steam. Once it's downloaded, unzip it somewhere on your hard drive and navigate to the place you put it. We want to go to the Tools folder, then Content Builder, which is a tool that packages a collection of files together and uploads it into the depot that you set up earlier. First of all, we need to write a configuration file that will tell Content Builder where the files we want to upload to the depot are. These can look slightly intimidating if you're not used to their syntax, but some examples are provided for us and we really need to change very little of them. We'll set the configuration for our depot first, so go into the Scripts folder and look for the depot build VDF file, then make a copy of it. You can name it after the title of your game, like Crystal Terrace 2 depotvdf Once that's done, open it up in the text editor, unless you're using Notepad, in which case get a better one first. I would recommend Notepad++ version 6.73 at the time of putting this video together. Open your depot build script file up and take a look at it. The file is a list of nested properties with names and their values both enclosed in double quotes, separated by a space. The first thing we want to change is the depot ID at the top of the file where you should put the depot that you want to upload into. This is the ID that you set up when we added the depot. You can find it by navigating to most any page on the Steam Partner site that shows the depot. Next, just delete the entire line containing the content root value. We're going to set this up at the application level instead. The way we're setting this up, you don't need to touch the other fields, but sometimes you'll want to use them. The star in the local path entry means to include all files, but you can limit the files to include by entering a path name here. Depot Path allows you to map different depots to different folders within your game's install folder. You might want this if you were setting up a depot that included downloadable game content. And the recursive option set to 1 means that the tool will look in subfolders of your content root path as well. Down here you can also set up files to exclude if the folder with your exported game has files that you don't want uploaded. Now we've set that up, save the file and we'll do the same for the application build configuration. This contains some higher level configurations that should apply to your entire application. Like before, copy and paste the example to create a copy, name it after your application and open it up. 
Here, fill out the application ID in the same way as you did for the depot. Again, check the application ID in the partner site, it's usually the same as the depot ID but with a zero replacing the last figure. You can give the build a description, but I'm just using the title of the game here. Content root is the next important value. This is where Content Builder is going to look for files to package. Here you want to enter the full name of the directory where you exported the game. If in doubt, navigate to it with Windows Explorer and then copy and paste it from the folder name bar. You don't need to worry about the other options at the top for now, but finally for this file, at the bottom set the sole depot entry to have the depot ID you set up before, then specify the name of the file where you configured it as the value on the right. With all that done, we're ready to upload the game. So that's our application set up to upload to Steam. Now we need to write a script that just runs Content Builder with the files we've prepared. In your file browser, take a step back to the Content Builder folder and right click to edit the run build bat file and open it up in your text editor. This is the command line script that we'll be running to start the build and upload process. It's just one line, but there are a few things going on here. Builder slash Steam command exe is the exe we want to run to start the process. It's a terminal by Valve that allows you access to a lot of Steam functions from a command line. By writing this script, you are telling it to automatically log in with the username and password we provide, then to run an application build with the given script. So we want to update a couple of things here. Change the username and password to match the account that you use to log into the Steam Partner site unless you're using a separate build account. And at the end, change the path for the script file to match the name that you gave your application configuration VDF file. The name starts with dot dot slash scripts because the path is relative to the place where Steam command.exe is running. We want it to step up a directory and then into the scripts directory first to find your build script. Finally, remove the plus quit at the very end of the line. This tells the steam command.exe to exit as soon as it's finished, but we want to check the build finished successfully before it disappears from the screen. With that done, save the file and it's finally time to run a build. Double click on the bat file and it'll open up a command line window showing its progress. The tool will likely download an update for itself first before logging in, building the depot and uploading the content. If you had the problem I mentioned at the start of the video, then you'll get an error saying fail to get application info here, and you'll have to wait for Valve to fix your application. Again, if you need to contact support, the Steamworks discussion group is a good way to do it. Additionally, the first time you run this, you might get a failure message because your account hasn't been used to log into Steam in this way before. If that happens, check your email for a verification code, and then follow the instructions to enter it. You can either do it through the command line, or just by logging in with the verification code through the normal Steam client. In the end, you should see a message indicating that the build finished successfully, and it'll give you a build number. You can type quit at the command line to exit, or just close the window. If you run into problems during this step, or need further information on this tool and what you can do with it, you can look up Steam's documentation under the Steam Pipe section of the Partner Help site. Steam Pipe is the name that Valve uses for the process of preparing content for games like this. Our last step is going to be setting the build we just uploaded live so that we can download it from Steam. Go back to the Steam Partner site into your application and edit Steamworks settings. This time go to the Builds tab, the second one along. Here you should see an entry in the table showing the build ID that we just made. This shows us that the collection of content is now on Steam and can be activated. In the pull down next to it, select Default to indicate we want it to be the build that's downloadable for the default branch of the application, then hit Preview Change. You'll get a page showing a table that compares the two builds size. If this is your first build, the size on the left will be 0 MB because nothing's alive yet. If you want to check the contents of the package, you can click on the numeric manifest ID on the right to get a full list of files and folders that will be downloaded to the user's system for this build. If that looks good, go back a page, then click the Set Build Live Now button. Unlike the other changes we've done, this happens instantly without the need to use the Publish tab. The build we've uploaded is now live for our application, so let's test it out. Open up your Steam client and log in as usual, then head to your games library and you should now see the name of your game listed among the others. You can install and run this as you would any other game, and anyone else who has permission to see the game in your account under the Users and Permissions tab should be able to access it as well. So install it, start it up, and you should be able to get it running and hit Shift and Tab to bring up the Steam overlay. So congratulations, your game is now working through Steam. If you find running the game gives you a missing executable error, check its properties, go to local files and then browse local files. If there's nothing in there, give it a few minutes for the change you made in the build settings to take, or go back to the site and make sure that you have a live build with content in it. Another thing to check is whether you have the right executable name under installation configuration. 
In the future, to make changes to your game, you just have to update the content folder that you set up when you exported your game from Fusion, then run the runbuild.bat file in the Steam SDK folder to create a build and upload it to Steam. To save yourself a step, you can open up your app configuration file again and change the set live setting to default instead of blank. This will automatically update the game to the latest build once you've successfully uploaded it, so you don't need to manually go into the build tab and set it to live yourself. And that's everything, you should now have your game set up and ready to go on Steam. Take a look around at the other sections of the App Data Admin and Store sections to fill out information about your game that will appear in the Steam client. If you run into any difficulties, you can always look at the Documentation and Help tab, or post a message on the Steamworks support forums. And in future videos, I'll be taking a look at setting up some other Steam features in-game like achievements and collectibles.